Someone once said that it's hard to cut away material, but if you cut too much away, it's a whole lot harder to add it back. And that's why we stopped where we did in the last episode until we had a chance to regroup, check things out. And now we're going to do a heck of a lot more cutting on this 56 Chrysler. Welcome back to Envision Prototypes. I'm Nick. Okay, so that's the uh, replacement rocker, and that's the original rocker. And that's why we're cutting all this stuff out. There's so much sandwiching in here, all this stuff, there's tar, there's everything in here. So it's to splice all this together and make it strong, it's far easier to cut it all out and start fresh. We need to save this post. That's why I'm being careful as to where I'm cutting it, how I'm cutting it out, because all we're gonna do is slide it back to the longer doors. There's a lot of layers in here, and to get through all of them, it's a little tricky. You might need to get the friendly persuader out.
That's 55 pounds right there. Gotta watch your eye on that. nest? More than likely. There you go. Well, they got their eviction notice. And that's what was burning. And there we have another really messed up panel. Uh, we got so much layering going on, and you can see that between layers, we got a bunch of rust starting. And I guess the water got in from somewhere on the door sill through a trim hole, and it just started taking all that out. Scrap bin. You might be asking yourself, why, Nick? Why? For us to build a car, on top of this mishmash, it'll be mishmash in the end. You'll have joints flexing, the doors won't close right, and to try and scab pieces on and just, you know, it's not gonna be feasible. So the best and quickest way is to start right from the beginning, from the inner structures, and work our way out. We'll bend up a whole new rocker. I've got all the profiles from the pieces that we cut off there. There's one over there. And we're gonna take and recreate all this stuff here these flanges, these supports for the door sills. We can't just bend up a rocker and, ha and hope that it stays put. They added these extra little braces underneath so in the event that somebody did step on the door sill, it didn't cave down. All right, so I'm gonna jump on to the other side. Now that I know how this side's kind of been put together, we're gonna do the other side same way, cut it apart, get it to the stage. This piece here, it didn't really add anything, didn't add any strength, and to tie into it, to put a joint here, you would have ended up with a V'd kind of a joint, and you would have had to use filler to bring that level. Right now, we can take and weld our new panel to this and extend it to where we need to, you see? So if we tried to blend it to what was here, it'd be a lot of trouble. In the end, by doing all this cleanup, we're gonna save ourselves a lot of work. I'm gonna keep cleaning and uh, bring you guys in, I guess, in a few minutes, hours, uh, because I wanna get this all tidied up to the point where we can start reconstructing stuff. I don't wanna lose these locations. That's why this hasn't been removed yet, and it won't be removed until I get the other side, like I said, all clean, cleaned up. And uh, yeah, so uh, I'm actually quite impressed at how solid things are these couple patches in here that were put in but overall the the tubs everything's all the sheet metal is pretty good even the floors are good but for us to do what we need to do with the bucket seats we're gonna put four bucket seats into this i'm not sure if i mentioned that two in the front two in the back and have a kind of a thunderbird style waterfall that comes down off the back down the center for the arm or the center console the armrest console 
Anyway, you guys go get another beverage. I'm gonna go on to the other side, cut all that out, and I'll see you when we're just about ready to, uh, I guess, restructure. Yep. We'll get everything lined up, squared up, maybe get a couple bolts in and to the mounts, and then we can go and proceed in restructuring stuff. Catch you in a bit. All right guys, we're gonna try and make that look like this rocker profile. And starting at number one. Is that number one there? Yep. Okay. So split the line. Oops, me out. Okay. 90? 90 degrees. Oh. Ah. We need the apron. This stuff is thick, 18 gauge. Yeah, we're gonna need it. Now this is 45. Okay. Looks good. Okay. Okay. So that's the second one. Okay. Then we have the top one to do. The B one. Seven yep. I think we'll go up there for seven eight. We'll check it. Not quite ninety. Okay. 
Now we're going to flip it, eh? Yep. Now for the tough part. Got the little return underneath. It's just a bit of curvature. See that? So that's the top sill. That goes in inside. The floor sits on that. And the door closes on this. This is just a soft. Okay. So this is just a soft bed, equal? Yep. Okay. I feel like a soft bed. Just a little bit, yeah. But you see, we gotta... We gotta come into four inch, just four and a quarter inches. Okay, we're almost there. We're gonna need a chubby guy get on this and sit on it. Let's do the final bend. See that? I gotta squeeze that in a little tighter. Let's do the final one okay, and so it will squish it down. That, that looks good. Yeah. Let's get this one done. Let's try there. lucky. Four and a heavy quarter. Now this end kind of got mangled a little bit. Uh, whoever did the patchwork drove this down. This was closer to original this side here so we're gonna stick with that. Match it up and aside from bringing the top down a little bit we're lining up perfectly. Okay let's get it in the car. Now you might be wondering, was it worth me chopping out as much as I did? If you look at this original rocker that came out of there, there's actually three layers that were kind of patched over each other. And for us to try and splice and get a strong joint wherever we had to do it, it'd be impossible because what do you weld to? You know, there's one layer, there's two layers, and three layers. So you know, I can rip it apart by hand. That, the bottom pinch weld was actually able to pull it off by hand. The spot welds, they didn't, or the plug welds, they didn't hold. So what we have here is a complete, fresh start from the beginning, inner structure, outer rocker installed, and you have one continuous piece front to back. There we go. Now at the back here, we didn't re-engineer everything. We basically copied what Chrysler did, rolled the flange up, the spot welds, plug welds into the inner wheel arch, the front. We're not going to do anything here until the front core support and fenders are on because I want to make sure that this cut line, wherever it falls, is precise to the fender. I'm not trusting what the guy did previously. There's a bunch of stuff that was done, I don't even talk about it. So when we get the front fenders on, then we'll make the decision as to where that falls, cut it off, and blend it in to the door post. Right now, we'll clamp this in place and see how it looks. This is all on screws because it all has to come apart. We have to clean, wash, sand, and epoxy prime everything, just like we did here. That's finished, so that's almost ready for welding, but all this has to be prepared yet. So. Now this corner 
has to be redone. There's a little bunch of little patches in here. So we're just going to leave this basically there. Uh, clamp it so that it comes into contact with that inner flange on the inside and then uh, run some screws in. There we go. Perfectly level. Just like the other side and just like everything else. Once you establish the level on the frame table, we base everything off of that. There we go. Okay, now that's lining up good with the bottom of the quarter there. Yeah. One thing I like to do is get the door mounted and see how close the factory panel comes into our custom rockers. Oh, I think I pulled my liver. Just gotta make sure it's cross threaded so you get all the threads. Up a little bit, or right there. Probably have to make adjustments, set the door gaps. And what we'll do is we'll go to the A pillar up at the front there, and then set to the rocker. Okay. Um, Wow. Well, the gap at the front, as you can see, is a little snug. So that's got to come down. But we've got the door to close. It's a little bit sprung. I wonder why. Uh, let me take a look inside. Could be the door check is jamming again. We had troubles with it before. Huh. I think it's possible. Yep. So you see this door check here and that are kind of interfering. It was seized, we tapped it in, but not quite enough. But uh, hey, the door's up on the car. It's almost closing, which is a good thing. How's the gap up at the top there by the windshield? Well, that looks pretty good. Check that out right there. And we're sealing on the rubber. Could be that we're in a bit tight. I think that's what it is, right here, look. Yes, we're a little bit tight. You guys can probably see better than me. So. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what's springing the door. Let's uh, step back and take a look at this. Now I did mention a four-door vehicle, the four doors are usually shorter than the two-door. So we are going to be extending that to that protractor, uh, the front edge of the protractor, but probably add about four inches to this door. Which means we're going to need new glass and a new door skin, which isn't a problem. It would be a lot easier and quicker to wheel up a new skin than trying to repair that crease, this speed hole, this crease through here, and a lot of these trim holes that we won't be using anymore as well as the key cylinder. We're keeping the handles, put uh, poppers in to lock and unlock the car. That's one of the little modern features we're gonna add to it. But hey, overall, the curvature off the door rolls right down nicely into that rocker. This front edge, we'll finish that up later. And there we go, guys. Inner outer rockers installed on screws and door mounted. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was a lot of fun. Cutting, cutting, and more cutting. But you can see why we did all that cutting. It's a lot easier to start from fresh 
and splice into existing good material than trying to scab stuff onto rust. Because at the end of the day, when we close these doors, they're going to click shut. You won't need to slam them. So if you enjoyed this episode, let us know in the comments, hit the like button, and if you're new to our channel, please hit the subscribe button. It helps us out a lot, it helps our channel grow, and it gives you a chance to follow along with this epic build. Next major step, I think, will be to attach the tail fins. Make it look like a Chrysler again. Take care, guys.